All right, it's media day. We are talking 23-6A. We have head coach of Pearland Dawson, Mike Allison, with us. Coach, you guys, in a very weird year, went through the district quite nicely. At, at undefeated 7-0, you went 10-1, facing a tough uh, North Shore team there at the end. But it looks like you're sitting back replacing Dagon your whole off the defense. I mean, is, what do you what do you think about the, how graduation hits you and how you're going to jump back on top? You know, it, uh, last year was extremely strange, and I couldn't be more proud of the kids and of the coaches and how they adapted. And, uh, you know, we were blessed with, with a lot of success last year. And, uh, heck, I guess it was about as fun as it could have been with all the different things that were going on. Um, and, yes, you know, we have, we have four returning starters on offense, uh, zero returning starters on defense. And uh, and a dang good kicker that's coming back. So um, that that group that we had last year of seniors were very talented. They had a lot of experience. They were uh, it was a really good group of kids. But uh, we're excited about the challenge. You know the 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 program here at Dawson is built on on family. And uh, you know when one group comes goes out, you know the, the next group is going to step up and, and get the job done. You know it's it's going to be a challenge. Uh, or we're going to have to get experience in a hurry, uh, but the expectations don't change. So make the job a little more exciting for you years like this where you're like, okay, I get to see which one of these players has what it takes to step up and take that position where you don't maybe not have a whole depth chart set up for you, you know, January 1. Instead, you got to wait through spring ball and kind of figure out where people step up and take their roles. Right, right. You know, we say every year that uh, – you know, every position is open, you know, tell the younger guys and, and, and guys that have been with us for a year or so. We tell them, hey, it's, it's open season. You, you can go compete for a position and, and, and get to where you want to be. But, uh, you know, this year with, with the amount of players that we're replacing, the amount of starters that we're replacing, uh, you know, it's never more evident than it is now that, uh, you know, the, the challenge that these guys have to work hard and, and get out there and earn what they want uh, is there. It's right in front of them. So we're excited about it, really. The kids have been working hard, and uh, you know, th I think they have that feeling that they know they got to step up and 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 get out there and compete for the positions and the things that they want. Well, one of the positions that should be filled is the quarterback position, and that's a guy that you, if I remember correctly, you had to toss him in in the middle of the year there due to injury, and Colin really kind of stepped up and, and did his thing. Colin, you know, had to step in as a sophomore last year in, you know, arguably one of the one of the biggest games of the year, the Pearland game. Uh, the previous week, our senior quarterback uh, unfortunately got injured, so uh, Colin was the next man in line, and he stepped in and did a great job. And you know, I think that the experiences that he was able to to have last year, stepping in, being a starter, playing in big games. Uh, will really help him moving forward this year and and his, and through his senior year as well. Now you mentioned Carter Brown earlier in the or earlier in this conversation. Well, a, a kicker like that kind of comes around once, heck, maybe a, a decade or so, two decades, where you can rely right. on him to probably get you two, three wins if needed. Especially, I mean, you we talked about the Shadow Creek game. He got you that one. What kind right. of ways does he have, and, and what makes him such a special kicker there? You know, he's, he was blessed with some talent, you know, but he works hard at his craft. You know, he is, uh, he goes to camps, he works with trainers, he, he works hard here in the off season and everything else and, and takes a lot of pride in, in, in doing well. Um, you know, and I think with his God given ability, plus the, 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 the work that he puts in, it, it definitely makes him a special, special uh, player for us. And, you know, he's been helping us ever since he's been at Dawson. Um, I, I say we get we get to about the 40 and we feel like we can score from there no matter what happens, you know, whether it's three or we're fortunate enough to get into the end zone uh, because of, of Carter. And, you know, that not just scoring, but uh, field position and, the, and punting and stuff like that and kickoffs, we can do some different things. So uh, it, it's really nice to have a weapon uh, in the foot of Carter Brown. Yeah, that is definitely a huge advantage, especially at the high school level. Let's talk a little bit. We talked a lot about your team. Let's talk about the other teams in the district. Uh, obviously, 
the four teams that made the playoffs last year are right now favorites to go back, but those eight leaf teams are, are, you know, they have some studs on each side of the ball. And also maybe talk a little bit about how Shadow Creek kind of got into the district and, you know, you took them down once, but they beat everybody else that they played. They didn't get to play the full schedule, but I right. think that's a team that we need to, that you need to worry about as well. I, I got to be honest. I'm worried every week. Um, you know, we have Shadow Creek, obviously, who has had all kinds of success since they've been open. They're very talented, uh, well coached. You know, uh, those guys do a great job over there and they'll be tough. <clears throat> they'll be tough every week. Um, Fairland, of course, is a, uh, you know, successful program. Uh, Coach Tulos does a good job with those guys over there. That's always a uh, very hyped up game. You know, one of the things that we have to do that week on top of preparing to play is uh, just to keep our kids focused in on the job we have instead of all the stuff that's going on around town, uh, which is great for the community. But, you know, when you're trying to get a bunch of teenagers to focus in on what they got to do, that's part of the challenge. Um, straight Jesuit uh, has a new coach, but always very talented, very well coached and disciplined in the things that they do. Um, Alvin, new coach. Uh, you know, they run the option, which is always difficult to prepare for because you don't see it very often. Those kids play real hard. Uh, and then the A-Leaf schools, Taylor Hastings and uh, Elsick, they're, they're always very talented. And they, I think, in our district, they probably got hit with the COVID stuff harder than any of the rest of us uh, just because of the situation they were in and, and in their community. They, they seem to suffer a little bit more because of it. Um, so I know that those coaches and those players are going to be real hungry uh, this upcoming year to, to work hard and, and to, to get back to the success they've had in the past. Um, so there are, there are no easy weeks uh, at all going through the district, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, Shadow Creek, Alva, whoever it is, uh, that every game is the most important game that week for sure. Well, you got three, non-district games to get ready for it. And that all starts on the 26th, uh, 26th, 27th weekend. Thank you for joining us, Coach. Man, I can't wait to see what happens in uh, District 23-6A. Good deal. Thank you, Ward. I appreciate all that y'all do uh, for the for the high school athletes and, and, and promoting all this stuff. We really do appreciate it. And, and I thank you for having me today.